Hello, it's Connor again, and I'm just going through here, and what you're watching behind me is me and the character creator of Dark Souls Remastered. Not Oblivion, I promise. And, well, I'm kind of going through, I've sped up the recording of it, this way you don't see me just kind of floundering for longer than 40 minutes on a video. I wouldn't want to hold you that long if you actually decide to watch this. So, yeah. That's what's going on behind me there. I've got to say, I love Souls games, but playing the older ones after being in the newer ones for quite a while does kind of hurt. The first Dark Souls game I ever played was Dark Souls 2, which is not a popular one, but I feel like it handles a lot better than the first one because of, well, oh, I don't know, multi-directional rolling and even if it's annoying, the adaptability stat was kind of useful at the time, at least for that game's gameplay. But everything here, it's still okay. It's just very first gen and I have to accept that as I start playing it. Now, this isn't my first playthrough. I actually started playing Dark Souls Remastered when it first came out on consoles, when it was considered a steaming pile of shit, which in all intents and purposes for anyone who's a legacy player of the series, yes, it is. It's hot garbage. But the thing is, I've never really played the first one up to that point, so I had no opinions on it. Just knowing what I know from Wikipedia, lore, and things I found from references in Dark Souls 3. Ooh, that was a really ugly shader for a minute. Ugh. Anyway, I digress. I wanted to play the game to experience it, and to understand it. So I figured, hey, I bought it on sale, it was cheap, and it was Dark Souls. So why not? It has Solaire in it, of course I'll buy it. And so I did. And well, as you can see, I'm working really, really hard, trying to make sure I find a face that's vaguely okay, even though the hair options are crap, and there's no real facial hair aside from kind of a 5 o'clock shadow that you can make up on the spot. But. There's some things about this character creator I wish they would have put in older games too. It's always fun when I can find some commentary they put on the descriptions of builds or hairstyles or ethnicities you can choose, and that's really something they kind of taper out from after this game. Now you can see a little of it in Bloodborne, kind of sardonically, it's almost comical the amount of descriptions that are and aren't there in Bloodborne, but, well, there's a lot of comparisons I can make between this game and Bloodborne, and plenty of other people who are more qualified for that kind of thing have already done that too. But hey, I still think it's fun. That and if you hit the wrong shader in this game, your character will evil turn pale, 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 green, blue, or purple. I know for a fact that when I'm hollow as this guy for as long as I've been playing him, he does indeed look like a blueberry raisin. Especially where his facial hair ends up popping out. You see, that's that's the discovery of that shader. That's it right there. Yep. Oh, sort of facial hair. Doesn't he just look like a guy who, uh, I don't know, lives in a basement somewhere? Which is kind of funny, starting in, you know, the Undead Asylum, because that's more or less the basement he would be living in. <laughs> oh. Ooh, but that neck. <sighs> Muscly boy, even though I made him really thin. Ah, that's okay though. Now, the mistake I made when I first started playing this game is I started as a depraved character and not playing the first game at all and starting from naked with a club was a terrible idea and I had a really, really bad experience for my first time. So I'm playing this one, and I'm trying to play to some of my strengths that I did when I first started the other games. So it's a pseudo-caster, somebody who can go ahead and toss something from a distance. I'm thinking Pyromancer, and then I'll use the master key because I like getting nice things. And from there, I'll use my usual motifs of naming a character after a Shakespearean support character. <coughs> Just Guildenstern. Guildenstern's fun. It's it's my thing. And he'll be kind of odd in this whole lineage timeline that I would try to create from my own lore, but 
for the most part, I like the idea of having Guildensterns around. Especially for this run. So this will be a guy just called Guildenstern. The Hollow Guildenstern. I don't know what to call it. But anyway, here's the opening because I'm basically done with this creator. I hope you like it. I'm not talking during it. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire, came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and his faithful knights, and the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenge the dragons. Gwyn's mighty gods peeled apart their stone skins. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. And Seath the scales betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. Soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen Carriers of the accursed dark side. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate.
All right, back again from the long pause. I don't really like talking during cutscenes. I I did it during my first start of the Bloodborne run and I immediately regretted it. So for this point onward, I try not to talk during them. Every now and again, I'll edit some things or I'll skip through some characters like right here when I'm talking to Oscar, I end up clipping through a lot of his dialogue, but that's only because I know what he's going to say and I understand the message. And it's not a cinematic, so it doesn't quite add to the visuals, even though I like how he's sitting the way he is. And I'll feel bad when I come back here and I have to kill his hollowed form later. Even if it's a really sad fight, too. And then... Yep. Understanding how the boulder got there, feeling proud of myself for not getting hit by it. Really, really proud there. Now, when I was fighting the Asylum Demon, I did the plunge. I figured, okay, and then I saw how much damage the fireball did, and I was just beside myself that a demon was that weak to fire. Jesus Christ! But, on an upside, it wasn't so bad. In the ancient legends, it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. Leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordra. Ah, uh, and now we have this well, well rendered skyline. Kinda. Kinda, I mean, it's looking better, I think from what I saw originally of this game. Vadi will have a good day of that. And then we have this great over the shoulder cut, and then we're back to the regular world. Usual loser, the crestfallen, sitting here, telling me all about that lore that wasn't really introduced to me in the intro cutscene, just that it was gonna show me the four things I need to kill, and Manus. Because yes, I believe the fervative pygmy is indeed Manus. But I'll get to that when I get to that. Anyway, okay, man breaks it down. Hey, you, murder hobo, bad D&D player, guy who's looking for things that explain why you're here. There's two bells. Uh, undead prophecy thing that other guy talked about? Well, they ring bells. Uh, one's in the undead church, and the other one's in Blighttown. Go ahead and, uh, work that out. To which I replied, because I'm a silent antagonist, so, uh, you know, protag, protag, oh god, can't speak. Anyway, yes, ready to go, and off I went. Eventually. But, yeah, I felt the, the blue hair would be a funny choice to add, since it's black but it shines blue, and my skin is a pale purple with blue accents where my facial hair and my eyes are, so it's just, you know, an odd odd blueberry boy that Mr. Guildenstern turned out to be. But I learned very early on that I do like the simplified combat of this game just a little bit. I hate the rolling. I absolutely hate the rolling and some of the movement gets kind of jerky and awkward. I found myself actually gliding a lot when I would backpedal, if I backpedaled in a slow way. I like moving kind of cinematic-like when I'm going and fighting usually. Which is why when we go to some of the fights that I have recorded of what I was doing, it seems like I'm getting hurt almost purposeful, like purposely. Not because, you know, of some buff or any boost I was getting from it, but because it seemed like it was adding to the urgency of what I was doing. And that's probably stupid and a bad thing to do. But I found myself doing it a lot, where I would just take risks that I know I wouldn't fully get rewarded with, but because it looked really, really, really cool, I would just be out there doing it. And, well, considering how this game's set pieces changes over time, yeah, I suppose that's acceptable. Because right now it's just been cracky ruins, overgrown cracky ruins and bricks, followed by a bunch of shambling corpses, like this guy here that I'm kind of just whiffing my shield at because I was using things that weren't taunts, I guess. 
but pyromancy is just dumb in this game to try transitioning. I know, great segues, right? But pyromancy is great early on. I mean, I don't want to go to Izalif and use just fireballs. I understand how much I would just be stepping on a rake that does chaos damage. No thanks. Not needed. But, well, at least for this part onward, I kill two bosses back to back with the fireball. Although I still haven't yet on this playthrough, and I've only been playing it for about, I'd say, a night or so now. I haven't killed Havel yet, and I really need to. Havel is my bane. I can smell what the rock's cooking, and it's my butt. He is just destroying me with the dragon tooth, and I hate it. But he's just so cool! Ugh. And then there's the Black Knights. Ah, uh, yeah. Notice that I'm kind of just luring him out. I kind of just lead him into an open space to where I can just backstab him or parry into a backstab or try to chain backstab. I just, it's the only way I found myself appropriately fighting these guys because they have too much poise for me to try and fair fight it. I can't interrupt anything they're doing, so I give them appropriate metal-based uh, prostate exams. And every now and again, if I know I can do it, I'll just check them on their moves and parry because that's how you survive throughout a lot of these encounters. I wish there was more bosses I could parry. That'd be great. That would really sell me on things down the line of Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3 because, well, I love just insulting bosses that way. But I have to end up respecting or not respecting a lot of the bosses I fight because so far, they're usually giant monsters and, well, that's kind of difficult to parry. Repost, sure. Parry, no. No, no. But, yeah, that's been my luck as far as killing the Black Knights. I don't like them. I especially don't like the ones with the Ultra Greatsword, not just the Greatsword of Swagger, because I like that sword. I, mean, I like that sword a lot. But, the Ultra Greatsword? Well, I think you can tell where I'm going from there. As you can see, I'm moving through the Undead Berg with not quite a lot of ease, but I'm doing okay. I'm doing a thousandfold better than the first time I went in when I was depraved because, well, I actually have stats that are good. And being a pyromancer is pretty rad in this game, I'd say. I, I wasn't prepared for how good it really was. In fact, I might just make it into a sorcery build, and I feel that the pyromancer is a better way to start for a sorcerer now, and that's kind of weird. But I don't know, I'm sure other people have done that before too. And if you look, I've also switched to a rapier because I just like them. They're my favorite kind of sword in this game because I like being able to attack while blocking and at the same time being able to send out a flurry of quick hits. In particular, I love using the backstep thrust move. So it's like the backstep, you hit the R1 or the uh, right forward trigger on your controller if you're using something on an Xbox because you're a godless even. Sony Master Race. Here it is. Yeah, that's an opinion of mine. I like Sony things. Oh, and I also am happy about that. You see that guy? That big metal boar there? Well, he wasn't ridden by Anton Chekhov, therefore I don't like it. And I'm especially happy that they recycled a lot of its animation to the giant pigs in Bloodborne and left it at that because the reoccurring weird boar animals in, from software games I really don't like them. Almost as much as I hated those archers who were really good at no-scoping me. Because they're really far away. And I can't lob fireballs that far. But that pig can try and really just eat my butt. Words cannot describe how happy I am that he doesn't really pop up too much more from what I played when I did my first run of the game. Though, I'm not certain if he'll be popping up if he's not just exclusive to this area and the other area I experienced them. I don't know that. I do not know that for certain. 
All I know is I'm not looking forward to the catacombs. I look forward to fighting Ornstein and Smog because that's a classic fight. I'm very, very fond of Ornstein and Smog as a boss fight. There's something about dynamic duo boss fights that when done the way I like them to, they just work out well. And Ornstein and Smog are the epitome of that in my opinion. I really like them. Top 10 anime battles, hands down. Perfect thing. Absolutely. Better than Gwen. Well, I haven't fought Gwen yet in this game, but I'm feeling like it's better than Gwen. Who I will probably just parry. Most likely. But yeah. I wish this was a game where you could probably get by better without a shield, but from what I started noticing as I played this game, that shields are really good. Because sometimes, especially in a game where you're very slow and you're bogged down, there's no way for you to really avoid the damage being done to you. And so unless you can tank it, uh, it's best if you just neutralize and reduce what you can. And, well, the shield obviously does that. So, I have to use a shield. And, I have to accept that a little bit. But if you notice, I'm wearing just light armor, no gloves, and then the default pants you start out with as the pyromancer because, well, I also like rolling at a speed that's adequate. Hmm, I really like that moment where he was just running into his friend here with the spear. Just gets pecked down. Ah. <sighs> There's something about him just running into his friend, passionate, utterly passionate to destroy me, and just not being able to do it because the guys holding pole arms are just dragging ass. But hey, if he wasn't, I wouldn't have, I don't know, murdered him now. And that would have been a real bad time for me if they were good at what they were doing. Ooh, and then there's the Balder Knights. They're actually one of my favorite enemy types that I've ran into just because they have this great animation, and if you watch it, that guy almost went into it, where he goes and he points out his rapier. Well, it's not really a rapier. It's a straight sword that has a lot of thrusting movesets. The Balder side sword is amazing. People already know this. They've known this for probably almost 10 years now. But they can fully turn their swords so they can parry you. And I, I like enemies that keep me on my toes like that who aren't skeletons. Because nobody should ever like the skeletons in this game. If you're involved with Nido or Pinwheel and not the giant Padre, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, fuck that. Not about that noise at all. And then right up here, if you watch, is a part of my hubris because I turn over and I'm very uncertain about this corner. I look over and I'm like, oh, well that's a boulder knight running at me. And I didn't notice the gaff the pole arm immediately just got slashed in the throat. Would be bleeding out and dying in realism games. Oh, and you see that other move that the Boulder Knights are doing? That one where they pick up their sword to slash at you, but they pick up their shield to go with it? I hate that move. Usually it catches me off guard, and if I don't block it, it just... I try parrying it because I'm a stupid muscle reflex animal, and I just assume, okay, I'm going to be hit by this. Let's see if I can turn that around. And then I end up just hurting myself. In a brick, tight space, corridor. Full of dead, rotting things. Because I want to look cool, but I don't think about being practical. And that's the problem that I'll perpetually run into in this game. Because sometimes you have to think about what's practical and what's not. Like, if you see straight ahead, there's definitely a path that I can go on that would lead me over there, where Andre is, where I know Andre is. But I don't trust that bridge, and I feel like that was the right choice, not trusting that bridge. So leaving that there, I went around, did the shortcut thing because I was not confident in my survivability at the moment, which is saying something, and you know, I started just aggressively poking anything I saw because I did not want to die that day, but I guess everything else did. <sighs> but I gotta say, so far from playing it out, it didn't take me nearly as long as the first attempt, which did warm me up overall to the experience. I did start thinking about 
other weapons that I want. I managed to pick up the claymore after scaring away the dragon, which I also need to kill. Like, it's Havel, then the dragon, because once I get Havel's ring, Fashion Souls begins with, oh, so much gusto. But, it, it's Havel and then the Red Drake that happens to hang out where Solaire will give me, you know, Sunlight Spear in a little bit. Not Sunlight, sorry, just Lightning Spear. Not, not the big bad version. I also appreciate that a lot of the undead that I meet in the Undead Burg and into the Undead Church also drink Estus. I find that to be a nice detail that just like me, they try to prioritize not just staving off the hollowing or defending what little territory they mindlessly protect, but that they also think about self-preservation. I find that's a very interesting part of the, their AI, that they're programmed to do that. And it makes me kind of wonder if I'm actually killing sentient beings and not just mindless dregs or monsters who lost their humanity long ago. Because, well, up until this point, I've been pretty purple looking and I looked really ugly. See, that's the stance I was talking about. That's the one. That's why I didn't attack him at all. I probably could have thrown a fireball at him, but I've been saving those, actually. But, yeah. You see, there he is again, drinking his Sunny D, because he wants to just feel the flickers of the first flame and remember that he was a man once. Well, a man by, you know, Lord Gwen's definition, sure, but a person with long, luxurious hair and probably abs Probably abs. Ooh, I should put that on a t-shirt. I like that. I like that a lot. Ah, uh, and there's another cliche we'll run into with From Software titles. The Cathedral. There's something about large clerical buildings that just happen in every From Software game. And I'm not complaining. I thought it was funny with the third or fourth one in Dark Souls 3, but, you know, that's fine. This is, again, running into the first of the series, so some traditions are just nice to keep up. Although I gotta say, up to this point, I was getting real, real tired of moldy brick buildings. And I just wasn't feeling it. I was trying to get past these really cool Baldur Knights, making sure they don't kill me because they're somewhat intelligent enemies. Unlike the Hollows I was fighting up to that point. And then there's Big Boy! all the way over there yeah you see i just paused just to consider my actions and make sure no one was looking at me while i was looking at him and i immediately said to myself yeah no and i started sprinting straight over to andre because he has a bonfire he's a blacksmith i have souls this means business and i need to get business done so I sprinted, I hauled ass all the way over to Andre. That was my mindset because Big Boy was coming down for me and I was not feeling him. No Estus, no health, no luck. Yeah, yeah, just help me light this bonfire. And now what I didn't realize is that apparently because he was a one-time spawn enemy in that area, like certain other enemies in the area, that, well, he didn't despawn to his original spot quite like I thought he would and I'll explain that in just a sec because if you look I'll go ahead and just spend some time here I'll talk to Andre get some basic lore things hey Andre sure yep 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 aroni and then I went down some stairs again to look at the entrance to Sen's fortress you know the Chuck E. Cheese of this game. And then I talked to Sig Meyer of Katarina. I enjoyed the Onion Boy, even if he'll make me cry later. I'll try and talk to him, and if you watch, 800 souls will come out of nowhere right about... Now? Oh. Okay, I was wrong. Not quite now. I'll keep talking to him. Mm, now. No? Huh. 
Oh, there it is. And that happens to be the souls from the big boy that chased me down all the way over here from the church. I don't know how he died. I think he fell off of a ledge on his way back to his resting spot because of his route. Like, he might have been taking a route across that rickety-ass bridge that I didn't take earlier and the bridge collapsed on him or he walked off it. Something happened that killed him, so I wouldn't have to kill him. So when I came back, I ran up this church, slaughtered some mooks, threw some fireballs, and... Wait, no, I didn't throw fireballs. I was saving those for the gargoyles. Right, right, right. But, point still stands, he wasn't there. Of all of the rapier crit butt play that I was doing, oh, I did throw a fireball. I was wrong. Uh, he just, he wasn't there for it. And I was really prepared for a big, slow, dumb fight that led off a lot of parries. Except I was also okay with not having that happen. That was also a cute, uh, exhibition of that move I like, where I just step backwards. It's kind of like if you do the back step with a pole arm, such as a spear or a pike. Your character will end up doing a little bit of a running start before he actually lands the blow. And what I noticed in this game is if you get the enemy the right distance in, you end up getting damage of you thrusting into them with the running jab. So part of the animation also damages the character you're attacking. So it makes it a lot easier and a lot better cutting them down. And it just, it was really exciting for me. From there, I pick up the Firekeeper's soul. You know, another thing that stayed solely within ha, ha, the first one and then referenced in the third one. After that, I noticed, hey, this is the lift. Made sure that I would remember this for when I want to go to the Undead Asylum again for the ring that lets me walk on, walk through high water without any difficulty. Enjoyed that. Went through, considered some items that I would want to buy from Cleric Boy here. Uh, because I was pumping quite a few points into Faith because I want the ability to heal in battle as well because I enjoy casting. Although it might require me to give up, well, my ability to either hold two weapons or my ability to cast fire in general. Not give up in a complete sense, just something that I'd have to unequip one item to use and then re-equip the other and do that archaic kind of thing. And then I went down here, saw this poor ragged girl in a little hole. And I said, hey, hey kid, have this. Can you do the thing? She did, she did the thing, reinforced my flask. I picked up my thermos and off I went. And I kept climbing. Oh, and hey, my dude. For some reason, I just couldn't get the parry animation down going up the stairs. So I was just perpetually parrying him until I was level. And then I finished the good jobber. Now... From here, things got a little bit twisted. I was expecting the caster. I saw him on my way up and I said, Oh, hey, it's Iron Pineapple. The Iron Pineapple? Question mark, question mark. So, you know, I was immediately. But then there were all these hobos. And I couldn't help but notice that there was just a lot of them. And that they were all being buffed by the same said Iron Pineapple. And I was wondering if this is really what the gamer community was like for this game. And it was just put as a hyper meta joke ahead of its time. So I'm just sitting there. Realizing that I have a rapier. Which is the most idiotic weapon for this kind of combat. Because I didn't have a lot of big swings. I honestly should have just equipped a broadsword and just gone to town and I'd be doing a great weed whacker impression of all these pink, naked freaks. But I didn't do that and I nearly died in the process. But I was okay, I managed to recover a little bit. And yeah, I was just freaking out. I'm glad I didn't quite record while I was playing this because you would have heard a lot of oh god, oh shit, oh no, oh no. And now I'm doing this in hindsight and realizing that, hey, 
I did this like an idiot. But uh, I survived after killing God knows. Well, actually, you could probably count them in the video. Go ahead and put in the comments how many of those ghouls I ended up killing. And then I went down here, he did his little dance, and then I realized I made a mistake again. And I forgot to clear out the other Balder Knights that were waiting in the foyer. You know, for tea, trumpets, the body of Gale. Body of Gale, body of Gale. Oh, and hey, Harry takes care of the first one. No problem. But then there's this guy. And hey, it's me getting attacked by that move that I don't like. Yep, really don't have an answer for that. And then I tried getting an answer for the first one, that partial. It always feels good getting a parry after getting a partial parry because you almost had him the first time, but when you catch it on the rebound, oh, it is satisfying. It feels good. And this guy, this guy reminded me why it's really good to play sorcery with PvE rather than PvP. And then there's that. You see that? Watch him swing again. I just block it, and he doesn't have the strength to keep on going with the hit. And it was just really, really funny to me watching him just basically recoil from hitting my shield. And it's not a good shield. I'm not a strong guy. But that tall pineapple just. He couldn't handle it. Oh. I'm really happy to leave Law Trick in there. I I want my Fire Keeper. I'm gonna keep it. it. You saw me go up there and consider letting him out just to continue the storyline of what would happen if I let him out. And ultimately, I made a gameplay decision of no. I will not let him out because if I did, I'd have to kill him. Because I remember being just vehemently upset over losing my firekeeper for Firelink Shrine because he went and he killed her. And then I couldn't get any heals in my spots in between going to New Londo because I had a bad time there too. You know who I never have a bad time with? This sexy, beautiful, tall drink of... Not quite orange juice, but definitely the sunniest disposition that Sunny D ever had. Ah, <sighs> God, that's my man crush right there. God bless Solaire of Estora. He's my favorite. And, once again, I had another case of, hey idiot, use fireball, because it's just so good early on. Why is that a thing? It's the best easy button. And you notice I got a little bit too carried away with that easy button, because I was nearly butt raped by, well, the other gargoyle that was behind me. But, I managed to get out of it. I was a okay, and I even had time to go and... Do a little emote afterward, and then ring-a-ding-ding -ding my bell. And with this guy rung out of the way, well, that's the first thing that needed to get rung. And now I'll have to go and ring the other one. And I think that's a good way to end it for this first video. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments in the comments, and I hope to see you soon. Adios!